Our next talk is Getting the Timing Right, Leveraging Category Interpurchase Times to Improve Recommender Systems. Welcome to this talk on how to get the timing right and how to leverage uh, interpurchase time information in order to improve recommender systems. Well, what's the motivation behind this short paper? Um, we are trying to combine research on marketing with research on recommender systems. In marketing, um, every purchase classically consists of three dimensions. First, the timing of the purchase, then the brand choice, and finally, the volume choice. In recommender systems, contextual information such as timing um, gain more and more importance. This is why we are all here today. Um, but we think that timing is a particularly important factor, especially in retailing. Why? Um, when we take the timing between two purchases within a category, um, we can use this information in order to identify interesting target customers for recommendations. So we think that um, taking into account information on inter-purchase times, which are, of course, closely related to category characteristics, um, we can improve in-store recommendations in retailing. So what's the setting we are operating in? Well, we have data from an in-store recommendation system that is currently implemented at an offline retailer. And this recommendation system is based on an anonymous loyalty card. This means this loyalty card only stores transaction data, but no demographics or any other customer information. So how are recommendations generated? Well, the customer enters the store, scans his loyalty card as a, at a special in-store kiosk terminal, which then prints a list of dynamic personalized promotions. These can be redeemed when the customer goes to the checkout and scans his loyalty card a second time. The algorithm um, that lies behind these recommendations um, models redemption probabilities by um, using a similarity measure between transactions, the promotional campaigns that are currently running, and an individual price off. And the data set we are looking at contains more than 100,000 unique users and more than 5 million observations. Well, let's look at the research questions we try to come up with. First of all, we wanted to look at whether there's an optimal category-specific point in time for a recommendation. Second of all, we also wanted to see whether recommendations influence interpurchase times on an individual level. Unfortunately, due to the timing restrictions, um, we will skip this question, but we answered it in our short paper, and we are happy if you approach us afterwards. And the th third question looks at whether we uh, improve the recommend recommender systems once um, timing information is incorporated. Well, let's begin with the first uh, research question. Um, is there an optimal point in time for a recommendation? Well, the standard marketing approach would be just to take the average category in the purchase time in order to approach customers with a recommendation. But what we did is uh, we modeled the redemption rate within a category across all subjects. And as explanatory variables, we used the timing si time since the last category purchase. We also included a quadratic and a cubic term in order to account for potentially nonlinear effects. Um, as you can see in the stylized graph, there is an optimal time for recommendation when redemption rates of these promotions are highest. Whether this optimal point in time coincides with average in the purchase time or not, well, we wanted to, to find this out, and this is why we want to have a look at the data now, so I hand over to my colleague, Dennis. Thank you. Okay, so now let's have a look at the results. Uh, what you can see here is an illustration for four different categories on the average redemption rate depending on when a consumer, a customer has made a purchase within this category um, the last time. So the further you go to the right, um, the longer ago a transaction has occurred, and the, more you, the closer you move to the left, the more recent uh, a transaction within this category was, um, ultimately like, yeah, well, yesterday. What you can see here is, uh, or what you notice as for three of the four different categories as hypothesized uh, a characteristic inverse U-shaped, meaning that there is some optimal point in time and moving to the left or to the right results in, um, well, a penalty or in this case, lower redemption rate. You'll also notice that for the category cola or in more general for soft drinks, 
redemption rates are actually highest right after uh, an initial purchase. You can also see that this implied optimal uh, point in time, so basically the point that maximizes the redemption rate in these curves, does vary for the different categories. And you also notice that the sensitivities from deviating from this optimal point in time varies as well. So milk, for example, seems way more sensitive compared than curd or bread. At the same time, you can see that curd is somewhat symmetric, while for bread, uh, two early recommendations have a higher penalty than recommendations made too late. Furthermore, you'll notice that the dotted line, so basically the, this point uh, that maximizes redemption rate is for free out of the four categories, precedes the average sample interpurchase time. And now the question whether this means um, we have accelerated consumption or stockpiling, this is what we addressed in research question two. Uh, as already mentioned, we have to skip that and dive into research question three. So here the question is, well, we try to analyze whether incorporating this timing variable, or to be more precise, the deviation from the optimal category-specific timing variable uh, improves our prediction of the redemption of recommendations. So as a baseline, we use the standard scoring parameter provided by our research partner. It's basically a similarity measure, a cosine similarity between um, the user and the item vector, and also takes into account the specific discount given. And well, we can see um, by incorporating the variable recommendations made too early or too late, we are able to improve both precision and, pre precision and recall uh, in our holdout set by 3 and 14%. This is for the example milk. Similarly, for cola, we're able to, um, to improve the model as well. You'll notice that here there's only one variable because there are no recommendations made too early. To sum up, we have found that uh, for some categories, timing is more important than for others. We've also, in our paper, analyzed whether with recommendations you can influence this into purchasing time, unfortunately not presented here, and we have shown how leveraging this information on interpurchase times can improve your prediction of redemptions of recommendations. That's it. Thank you. Questions? What data set did you use for this? Uh, we're cooperating together with a company, uh, a big, um, well, technology solution provider from a big European city, uh, loyalty card data um, uh, that the company shared with us, proprietary, no public data. Uh, I have one question. I wonder the redemption really reflect uh, kind of the lift uh, uh, due to the recommendation because, it, I mean, without your recommendation, I may buy that item anyway. So it just naturally kind of happen. It's not really, I mean, you can consider it a redemption if you happen to recommend it, but I mean, you just purchase it anyway. Of course, there Do might be these users that also would have purchased some items that were on the list with personalized promotions without a promotion. This could be, but there might also be users in the set which wouldn't have, been, have purchased um, this item in case it wouldn't have been on the list. So, of course, we can't tell these apart, but this is something we will account for in future research. And well, many of the campaigns in the data set are also targeted explicitly to people that have not um, bought the specific brand or the product before. We have time for maybe one more question. Uh, interesting talk. Uh, uh, do you use also some kind of online data or only transactional data from the retailer? Currently, our retailer is only operating offline, so we only have offline data available. OK, thanks. One more quick question. <laughs> if there was one. One last one. So uh, it appears that the accuracy of your uh, logistic regression model is low. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, did I see it right? 
Well, it again depends uh, on the specific uh, brand and um, category, yes. Um, depending, some, uh, they perform better for some categories and brands than for others. And obviously, there's also some uh, bias towards brands. Some brands work better than others. And uh, in future work, we also plan to include that as a covariate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.